Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome to a new video. My name is Prince Mason. Today, I'm going to be showing three tools that everybody should be using in Capture One. These are amazing tools and tools that I use all the time. And yeah, let's get straight into this video. But before we do that, if you have not subscribed to my channel, kindly subscribe and do not forget to um, hit the bell icon so you can be one of the first people to know when I drop new videos like this. And yeah, so let's get straight into this. Now, this is a photo shoot I did of a friend recently. And um, the image you can see on your screen is a raw image. This is straight out of camera. <clears throat> um, nothing done to this image, right? Now, the first thing I'll do or the first tool I'll talk about is my levels tool. Now, this is a tool that is probably um, not in Lightroom. I don't think it's in Lightroom yet. It's, it's just in Capture One and levels is... The levels adjustment is something I use in Photoshop all the time. So i um, seeing it in Capture One or seeing it when I start using Capture One was just um, amazing. And uh, it just helped my workflow immediately. Now, what I do in levels, or let me explain this levels tools is, is you have your highlights um, because you can see a histogram. You have your highlights on the right and you have your shadows on the left and you have your mid tones at the middle. My highlights start picking at this particular point right here so i'm just going to drag in my highlights to the point where it starts peaking which is right here and i'll stop and i'll come to my shadows and do the same i'm just going to pull my shadows in a little bit now sometimes with the shadows i can just be a little bit extra and drag it but you know the more we drag it the more you can see all these places are just gone and there are probably no details for you to see in the shadowy area again so i'm just going to pull this back and I have my image looking like this now. What this does to my image is it adds a lot of contrast and brings my image to life. So I'm going to hold Option or Alternate on the PC and I'm just going to click the Undo button so you guys can see this is the before and the after. So it comes from a very flat image to where it is right now. So typically, this is what I do in my levels. Um, and basically, this is almost the first thing I do for every image, every raw image that I bring into Capture One. Now, the next tool we're going to talk about is the Loma Curve. Now, the way the Loma Curve works is different from the way your normal RGB curve works. Now, your RGB curves affects your red, blues, and your greens. So, let's say I pull down my um, shadows. Now, if you know how the curves work, you know your shadows are down here um, to your left and your highlights are up here to your right. And I just drag my highlights up. You guys can see the image looks really red. The blues are popping. So, basically, it's affecting all the color spectrum of this image right or the red blues and green um, spectrum of this image right uh, hopefully that's the right word so I'm just going to undo this and I'll come to my luma curve what my luma curve does is that it affects everything in the image like the highlights the shadows and the mid tones without actually affecting the colors of the image so if I drag my luma curves I drag my shadows down a little bit and I drag my highlights down a little bit or let's just say I go crazy and I put my highlights up and I put my shadows down you guys can see that it's affecting the image but it's living colors almost the same way that it was so that's the amazing thing about the the Loma curve tool and that's why I absolutely love this um, tool so what I want to do is that I would like to reduce the highlights on his forehead and on his face and just generally reduce how bright the image is right um, what I'll do now is I'll just come up here to my highlight somewhere around here and I'll just drag this down as you guys can see the image looks a lot better um, now this is just a fun tip and this is um, basically a tool that is available both in in Lightroom and capture one um, I'm not talking about the Luma curve I'm talking about your high dynamic range so um, for this image I'm just going to draw my highlights up um, just recover the highlights at the, <laughs> the background um, if you if you have not seen the video I put out on how I shot this image, you should definitely check it out. I'll put a card above and I'll link the bill, um, the video in the description below. So yeah, so this is just a quick tip on how to use the high dynamic range. But yeah, so let's see uh, before. So if I bring it up here, you can see how the image looked before. And let's just pull this down. And this image looks really good. So I'm just going to create a new variant right here. So we can see how far we've come with this image. So yeah, guys, I've created a new variant so you guys can see this is our before and this is our after before using both tools. So our before, our after, before using both the levels tools and the Luma curve. Now, another thing I do typically is after retouching an image like this, I'd like to go for a contrasty look, but I just do not want to touch the colors. And this is where the Luma curve comes in again. Now, I'm just going to come down here to my shadows for my Luma curves 
and I'll drag this down a little bit and I'm just going to add my highlights to it just a little bit. Now, if, as you guys can see, I'm just really, really careful with this and I'm not going overboard. So I'm just going to hold the option key again and let's check our before and our after before and our after the image looks super nice and this is why like i said i really love the loma curves this, this was not available in previous capture one um um softwares and i, I think it came in at 10 or 11 i'm not sure but um it's just an amazing tool to have and it's a tool that i use all the time and it's just a tool like i said i'm recommending to you guys so the third and final tool that we're going to talk about is our three-way col color corrector so basically that's not how it's called here but that's how i think it was called in um video editing softwares like premiere pro because that's basically where you could find um this tool before but capture one has brought into capture one and it's an amazing tool to have now for this image what i'm just going to do is i'm just going to show you guys how this works and just do a little color grade so what i typically use this to do is color grade my images so now this it has the master which would affect every part of the image so let's say for example i can just make every part of this image really really warm so let's keep that right and I'm just doing this off the top of my head. I don't have a specific look that I'm going for, but you know, I'd like his skin to be warm and I like the, the whites to be, you know, a little bit cool. So for that, I'm going to come to my highlights and I'm just going to drag my whites down and make the whole image a little cooler, right? Then I'll come to my mid-tones because typically that's where his skin tones are, right? And I'm just going to make his skin tones um warmer right then i'll come to my shadows and um, let's see where should we take this ah if we make our shadows blue just a little bit right so um this is let's see our before and our after this is our before and this is our after his skin tones are warm um the whites at the back are still like white you know we reduced it by dragging um, the highlights towards the blues and the mid tones. This skin tones are we just make his skin tones nice and rich. And let's just make this whole image the shadows blue, right? And let's go to our master and just bring this down a little bit. So yeah, so this is where we're at, and I just graded this image. I love how the grid looks. Another thing I want to show you guys is when you're working on the three-way or the color balance the three-way color corrector you can see the shadows we have this slider right here the sliders on your left typically what it does is that it affects saturation so if i want it to be a lot more saturated instead of coming here and pulling this what i can do is that i can dial it to be a lot more accurate you guys can see that right and if for some reason i want to work on the shadows and the highlights of the image i'll come to the slider on the right and i can make the shadows as you guys can see I'm making the shadows a lot brighter or I can make the shadows darker. So let's just keep this here. Let's go to our highlights. We can make our highlights a little darker or we can make them brighter. So I'm just going to reduce our highlights and our mid-tones. Now I'm just being really extreme here, right? I'm just being really extreme here. Um, so you guys can see the difference. So let's check our before. This is our before and this is our after. Before and our after before and after so that's about it those are the three amazing tools that i typically use in capture one and three tools i feel like you should definitely definitely try out and use to in capture one so thank you so much for watching today's video if you want to be a part of this community you want to see more content that i put out you want to see my motivational mondays anything that i put it out definitely subscribe to my channel also follow me on instagram so you can see all the amazing images that i've been shooting and the new images that i put out then you can also come on my instagram live and ask me questions people like request to join and and we talk and ask questions and i answer so definitely follow me on instagram if you love today's video go hawk smash and that like button and comment below let me know what content you want to see and how this is helping your workflow thank you so much for watching today's video i'll see you guys in the next one have a great week peace